In this video, we're going to take some time to review logarithmic and exponential functions. So that is for the natural log, the natural exponential function, and for bases other than E. So I've decided to put all of this review in one video. That is for sections 5.1, 5.4, and 5.5. Um, so you will not see a review in those sections. I will just encourage you to come back to this video so that you can review what you need to know. So we'll start by just comparing the natural logarithmic and natural exponential functions. And this is why I chose to review them both at the same time rather than to make a separate 5.4 video over the natural exponential function. We can see that the natural log function and the natural exponential function are related. And when I'm talking about natural log, I'm talking about y equals the natural log of x as opposed to y equals log of x, uh, which would be like the common log or log base 2 of x and so on. So I'm speaking specifically about the natural log and the natural exponential function, which is e to the x as opposed to say y equals 5 to the x. Uh, the reason these are important is because they are inverses of one another. So if I were to draw a line here at y equals x, we can see that by flipping across that line, I get from the logarithmic function, which is red, over to the natural exponential function, which is blue, and vice versa. So if I drew that line and reflected across that axis, those are inverses of one another. We can see that as well when we look at, say, the domain of the natural log function matches up with the range of the natural exponential function, uh, and so on and so forth. We can see that we have similar properties for the logarithmic and exponential functions where the base is not e. So if I have a base of a, uh, I can see that I'm still going to end up, if I have the same function, so the same base, y equals 3 to the x or y equals log base 3 of x, I'm still going to end up with the same function reflected across the line y equals x. Uh, and that's the same for whether a is greater than 1, which is what I have here, or if a is between 0 and 1, so if I have some sort of fraction, which is what I have here. I'm still going to be reflecting across that line, but as you can see, it does make a difference in terms of the shape of the graph. I do want to point out to you that we can relate the equation or the function of log base a of x as we can rewrite it as the natural log of x over the natural log of a and that's just really using the change of base formula same thing for the exponential function my exponential function is y equals a to the x where a obviously is some constant and if i wanted to rewrite that in terms of the natural log it's e to the natural log of a times x Let's take a look at some of the properties of logarithmic and exponential functions. Notice that I've written these not specific to the natural log or natural exponential function, but you could rewrite any of them using the natural log instead. So if I had the natural log of x to the n, that's the same as n times the natural log of x. So these two properties are the same. One is using the natural log, one is not. Equivalent, I could say, um, e to the x, e to the y is equal to e to the x plus y, and so on. So you can do this for the expo natural exponential or for a base other than e. So again, this review is going to help us for all of sections 5.1, 5.4, and 5.5. So in the logarithmic side, um, again, these are pretty straightforward and we've seen them before. If you have the log of a product you can separate that so if you're asked to expand a logarithm we would just use the plus to separate if we are multiplying or if we're dividing you would use the minus so that is a way to expand your logarithms um, we've already talked about this one which moves the exponent out to the front and then log base a of a is one in the same way that the natural log of e is one because the natural log has a base of e for exponential functions, we have a to the 0 equals 1. Hopefully, we all knew that one already. Um, if you're taking the um, product of something with the same base, you can rewrite that as the base 
and then add the exponents together. Same thing with division, you can subtract just as we did over here with logarithms. And then this is just the power of a power. So a to the x to the yth power is a to the x times y. Hopefully we're all familiar with all of these properties already. Um, the last are the properties of inverse functions. And so this first one is what we would use if we want to change logarithm, uh, logarithmic function into an exponential function. So for instance, say I had log base three of x equals y. How could I rewrite that? Well, I just use, I call it the swirly method. You take the base and then you swirl. So this would be equivalent to three to the y is equal to x. So, and then vice versa, I can go in reverse. If you're doing that, just remember that the base of the logarithm is always the base of the exponential function, and that should help you on your way. Um, the other two happen to be about the inverse functions. So a, log base a, these two are inverses and they cancel out. So I'm left just with x or whatever the function happens to be there. And again, log base a of a, that's an inverse and that cancels out and I'm left just with x. So let's work a little bit on expanding and condensing logarithms. So if I have a logarithm that is a quotient, I can rewrite that as the natural log of one minus the natural log of four. The natural log of one is zero. So I'm going to just have the negative natural log of four. Log base two of 2x minus 4, so I'm going to call this 2x minus 4 to the 1 half, so I'm going to use the property where I can take the 1 half and move it to the front, and then I have log base 2 of 2x minus 4, and that's as far as I can go. Lastly, I have the log. Keep in mind, if there's no base written for a log, in the same way that there's no base written for the natural log, but we know the base is e, if there's no base on a log, it's called a common log, and that base is 10. So again, in this case, I would take log of 4x minus log of 3. And that is all I can do to expand those logarithms. If I want to write it as a single logarithm, again, I'm just basically working in reverse. For my first one, I have log base two of x plus two log of y. So please pay attention here. I have a log base two, and this is a log base 10. So I cannot do anything with this. The only thing I could do here if I wanted to is call this log base two of x plus log of y squared, so I could use that property to bring the two as an exponent. But again, because this is base two and this is base 10, those cannot be combined together. Uh, lastly, we have natural log of x plus one plus natural log of x plus two minus three times the natural log of x. So this three, I'm going to turn into an exponent. And what that tells me is the numerator, because there's a plus, these are being multiplied x plus 1, x plus 2, don't forget the natural log, and then minus 3, I'm sorry, minus x cubed, so x cubed. So it's the natural log of that expression. Let's work on transitioning between logarithmic and exponential functions. So for the first set, we're rewriting as a logarithmic function. So going from exponential to logarithmic, we're going to say, again, just like we're going to do over here with the swirly method, the base is always the base. So this is the base of the function. So when I rewrite, this is going to be log base seven of five is equal to X. So we're always going to swirl. So we start with the base. This is going to be log base six because the base is six of X is equal to 10. This is going to be log base four of six is equal to X. And for the last one, I'm not going to write log base e of seven is equal to x because log base e is the natural log. So the natural log of seven equals x. And now let's go in reverse. So again, the base is always the base. So I'm going to start here. x squared equals four. Now I don't have to solve it, remember. 
I just need to rewrite it as an exponential function. And if you're ever unsure, remember we can always go in reverse. So just like we did here, we can say, well, the base is always the base. So that would be log base x of four equals two. And we can see that that's where we started. For the next one, again, we've got log base nothing. So what's this number? This is 10. It's actually called the common log. So if there's no number written there, just like when it's natural log, we know the base is E. If it's log with no number, the base is 10. So this is 10 to the 15th is equal to X. This is two to the X is equal to five. And how would I rewrite this? Again, there's no base, so that base is E because it's natural log, so E to the 17th is equal to X. We're going to finish up by solving logarithmic and exponential equations, so that's a really good review. Uh, we're going to start with solving an exponential equation. So what you want to do is get the exponential equation by itself as much as possible. So I already have in this first um, white equation, I'm looking here, I already have e to the x plus 1 by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of each side. And in doing so, if I take the natural log of e to the x plus 1, this side is going to stay the natural log of 7. This is now an exponent, so I'm going to write this as x plus 1 and then natural log of e. Well, what's the natural log of e? That's 1. So what I have is natural log of 7 equals x plus 1, and I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm going to say the natural log of 7 minus 1 is equal to x. So that's as far as I need to go. So we're taking the natural log of each side. I'm going to leave that second one for you to try on your own. Let's go ahead and take a look at solving a logarithmic equation. So again, I want to get that natural log by itself. And notice I already have it by itself. I have the natural log of an expression. So in order to get rid of the natural log, I'm going to exponentiate each side, which means I'm going to use E as the base and whatever is on that side as the exponent. Now, why do I do that? Because e to the natural log, those things are inverses. They cancel out. That leaves me just with 2x minus 3 on the left-hand side and e to the fifth on the right. Now, again, it's just algebra. I'm solving for x. So I'm going to add 3. I'm going to divide by 2 to get x equals e to the fifth plus 3 divided by 2. Now, I've left you with one of each to try on your own. So if you would press pause, try both of the questions. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for the first one, I would divide by three before I do anything else because I want that e by itself. So I want e to the four x is equal to five because I've divided each side by three. And now it's going to look exactly like it did above. I'm going to take the natural log of e to the four x and the natural log of five and the natural log of e cancels out and I just get 4x because again, we're going to use that property that brings it to the front and the natural log of five. And then I'm gonna divide by four. So x is the natural log of five divided by four. And yes, I could find that as a decimal um, and feel free to do that, but I'm just going to leave it as an exact answer. For the last one, again, I would use this property. I would bring the two out front and then divide each side by two. So I'm going to have the natural log of x plus two is equal to five because again, I've divided each side by two. And now it's going to look exactly like above. e to the natural log of x plus two equals e to the fifth. e and natural log cancel out and I get x plus two equals e to the fifth. And then I'm going to subtract two, e to the fifth minus two. Here are a few more questions for us to try. Same process we just did, but now the base is no longer e. So again, I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to use the base of 3 to take log base 3 of 1 over 81 is equal to log base 3 of 3 to the x. Please be sure that you're showing that step. Log base 3 of 3 cancels to give me x. On the left-hand side, I have a quotient. So I'm going to take log base 3 of 1 minus log base 3 of 81. 
uh, because I'd rather use my brain than my calculator. So log base three of one is zero. That leaves me with negative log base three of 81 is equal to X. And I can actually solve this because this is saying three to what power is 81? Well, obviously three to the fourth power is 81. So this is four, but I've got a negative out front. So my solution is negative four. Keep in mind that I can always check it. So I can say, does three to the negative four, what do I get? I get one over three to the fourth, which is one over 81. And that is what I'm supposed to get. So pretty much we're geniuses. Uh, next, solving for log base two of X is equal to four. I would take, whoops, two, the base of two, two to the log base two of X is equal to two to the negative four. 2 to the log base 2 cancels, giving me x. 2 to the negative 4 is 1 over 2 to the 4th, or 1 16th. And again, you can always double check that back into the question. So two questions for you to try. Same idea. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for this one, I would start with the base of 5. Log base 5 of 5 to the 3x is equal to log base 5 of 75. This side cancels to give me 3x. This side is still just log base 5 of 75. Now, if I could turn that into a nice whole number, I would. But this is saying 5 to what power is 75? And there's no such whole number. Now I'm going to divide by 3. So the exact solution is x is equal to log base 3 of 75 divided by 3. That is what I would write as my answer. Now, sometimes we're asked to also find a decimal equivalent, so you need to understand how to put this in your calculator. If you have a log other than 10, and you don't have a calculator where you can enter the base of the logarithm, you will have to enter log of 75 divided by log of three, and that will evaluate just the numerator. And then I would take that divided by three, because obviously three is the denominator, and that gives me that x is approximately 0 0.8942. So that's the approximate solution. For the last one, um, we can actually just kind of circumvent this one. Remember, this is log base 10. And log base 10 of 100 says 10 to what power is 100? So I can just replace this with 2. 2 equals x minus 7. Add 7 to each side, and I get 9 is equal to x. And I'm done. If there's anything in what we just reviewed that you don't understand, I will do my best to add some links to the description that link you back to the Algebra 2 course where you learned this the first time. Um, if not, you can forge ahead. And we are going on to the natural logarithmic equation differentiation.